Hello, my name is Dr. Mark Bosom. It is very difficult to put into words the thoughts and emotions we feel when we think of the men and women in the armed forces of the United States. Great sacrifices were made to achieve our freedoms and many more have been made by virtually every generation of Americans to maintain it. I think that is something we need to remember that the freedoms we enjoy cannot be taken for granted. America has a great military to preserve and protect our country and everything we hold dear. It gives me great comfort knowing that technology is helping these brave men and women do their jobs with great confidence under all conditions. The young men and women who serve our country are our sons and daughters. They and their families make great sacrifices, especially during long deployments overseas. They have our hopes that they accomplish their missions and return home safely. To all of our servicemen and women, and to all of their families, I offer my profound thanks. As a doctor, I am proud of the contributions that physicians have made to the performance and safety of our military and our first responders. Thank you. is the Navy's elite special warfare team, the SEALs. Their tactic is to inflict maximum devastation with minimum manpower. Their attack relies on intense violence and an all-out fury to stun their target. And quickly fade away in the confusion. They've been called the world's most effective fighting force. They can operate in any environment. Jump from planes, drop from helicopters, dive into the ocean and stay submerged for hours and emerge ready to fight. For SEALs operating far from the protection of the main force, the difference between living and dying is measured in seconds and depends on seeing and engaging the enemy before they can be seen. Today, thanks to Navy surgeons, SEALs have a new fighting edge, laser vision. It's not science fiction, it's now. This is today's Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps. Together, they're the most advanced fighting force on the planet and beyond. The biggest advantage in combat has always been to be able to see your enemy before he sees you. Today, that means orbiting surveillance satellites capable of reading the license number on a vehicle 500 miles below. Or goggles that can amplify the light of a star thousands of times and turn night into day. Tight formation coming in. It means a pilot sitting in a control room in New Mexico can track down an enemy on the other side of the world and if necessary, lock up target five, eliminate them. Two, one. Impact. New technologies have enormously enhanced our ability to see the enemy first. But these are all just extensions of the human eye. And they are all subject to its limitations. Right now in the Air Force, over 45% of everyone in the Air Force is nearsighted and needs corrective lenses in order to do their jobs. Perfect. Colonel Charles Riley is an ophthalmic surgeon and consultant to the Air Force Surgeon General for Refractive Surgery. 
For more than a decade, Dr. Riley and other military surgeons have been using laser refractive surgery to enhance the human weapon system. Uh, we talk about upgrading our avionics in an airplane so they can see out further, see the bad guys sooner. Well, that's what we're doing with our laser for the human weapon system. The most important weapon system in the cockpit is that human. And so to be able to offer them that upgrade in their avionics is priceless. It really is priceless. In 2000, the Department of Defense established the Warfighter Refractive Eye Surgery Program. It grew out of an experiment begun years earlier among the Navy's SEALs. SEALs go through what is considered to be the most mentally and physically demanding of any military training. Glasses or contact lenses are not an option. Rather than lose well-qualified candidates because of poor eyesight, the Navy began exploring the potential of correcting their eyesight with laser refractive surgery. In 1997, after several years of highly successful trials, the Navy began offering the surgery to qualified SEAL candidates. Within a year, laser vision correction was adopted for use by the Special Operations Forces in all branches. Over the past 10 years, the mission has expanded even further. Today, all military personnel headed into combat are eligible for refractive surgery. To date, nearly a half million American frontline troops have had their procedure. To handle the increasing demand, the military maintains 20 warfighter refractive surgery centers at U.S. bases around the world. Commander Elizabeth Hoffmeister is a flight surgeon at one of them, the Naval Medical Center, San Diego. She was one of the researchers involved in the Navy's trials of laser refractive surgery. We now have seven centers in the Navy and do approximately 13,000 procedures a year. And the goal would be to not have anyone have to deploy into theater requiring glasses. Commander Hoffmeister used to need corrective lenses, but had the procedure herself before a recent deployment to Afghanistan. It's a huge issue. And that's just for me, I'm a doctor on the back lines, you know. Imagine the benefit to the actual frontline warfighter, and it, it could mean not just an inconvenience and doing well on the rifle range, but it means the difference between living and dying. It, it's that important. When we send a soldier off for deployment, that's one of the things that we as commanders have to do. We have to make sure that they are well trained, well equipped. If we can make him better, and he is qualified for corrective surgery for his eyes, Let's do it. General Frank Helmick is commanding general of the Army's 18th Airborne, the Rapid Deployment Force, and the deputy commanding general of U.S. forces in Iraq. He's had LASIK surgery himself. And our military has an advantage over our adversaries on almost everything, I think. And LASIK surgery is just another indication of that. I think it's pretty well understood how difficult it is for an individual to make it through SEAL training. Captain Frank Butler understands. Before becoming an ophthalmologist, he was a platoon officer in underwater demolitions with SEAL Team One. What's not well understood is how difficult it is for an individual just to get into SEAL training. You have to be in great physical shape, but you also have to be free from any significant physical defects. And Poor vision due to refractive error was one of the biggest things that kept people out of SEAL training. I was told, listen, your eyes are outside the limitations, and you know, I had pretty much come to grips with the fact that I wasn't going to be able to go into the SEAL teams um, towards the end of my junior year and beginning of my senior year. And I was heartbroken. Try to recreate the experience of having to defend yourself. Ever so since high school, Clint Bruce wanted to be a SEAL, and he seemed to be the perfect candidate. He had been appointed to the Naval Academy. He was in peak physical condition, playing linebacker on the team that took Navy to its first bowl win in 15 years. The initial hit by Clint The Saints and the Ravens made him offers, but his vision, 2040 in one eye and 2070 in the other, wasn't up to SEAL standards. But the SEAL community wasn't ready to give up on Bruce. 
And that's when they pulled me aside and they said, listen, you did a great job in your interview. Uh, obviously, we know what you're made of because we've watched you 